Good morning. Another episode of The Nonprofit Show. This is part two of our drill down uh, with Pearl Hoagland, and she's joined us here today as Director of Fundraising Academy. Yesterday's conversation, very similar today, we're just going deeper. So it's all about building rapport with the gatekeepers. So before we dive deep into this conversation, we want to remind you who you are seeing or possibly listening to. So hello to you, Julia. Julia Patrick is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. We are continuously proud to have our presenting sponsors with us day in and day out to elevate these levels of conversation like the one we're having with Pearl today. So a huge shout out of gratitude goes to our, our great friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at the National University. Again, hello and good morning to Pearl. We also want to give a shout out to Be Generous, Donate Now, Pay Later, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, nonprofit thought leader, as well as the nonprofit nerd. If you haven't checked out these companies, we highly encourage you to, to do so, and we highly endorse their services. Uh, we've gotten to know them over the last almost four years now, and they are all so amazing to help you provide uh, more services in and around and throughout your communities to elevate your own mission. And hey, if you missed any of our episodes over these last three and a half, four years, you should know where to find us by now, but that's okay. I'm going to remind you, Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as podcast form. So if you're a podcast listener like I am, and Pearl, I'm curious, are you a podcast listener? I am a podcast listener. Yes, me too. You can cue us up wherever you stream your podcast. So you just heard that she's a podcast listener. Yesterday, Pearl was here with us for part one of this drill down series. And again, for those of you that aren't familiar with Pearl, Pearl Hoagland is the director of Fundraising Academy at National University. And the first question out of the gate, Pearl, what podcast are your favorite? <laughs> it is so good to be back. Um, I love crime podcasts. It's terrible, but the yes. one, the investigative podcasts really just... That is how I disconnect from the world. That's good. We all need that. We all need that time. <laughs> yes, very much so. Well, you know, Pearl, it's it's really uh, fabulous to have you on with us because we were saying this yesterday. We work so much with you um, on the leadership side, but we don't always get you and your voice of wisdom. And so this is a really cool opportunity for us. We love all of our partners uh, from Fundraising Academy. Um, they're just amazing. They're all different, but yet they all can navigate the cause selling cycle. It's really fun to see that, I think, from Jarrett and I and our point of view. But when we get you on, um, you're like what we call the big get. So thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I have to say I love our trainers. I love they make us look good and bring those diverse perspectives. So it's always fun to be here. And I do really enjoy watching them on the show. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. And again, um, it is fun. Like I mentioned, it's fun to see them use these um, processes and these concepts, mm -hmm. but make them their own. Exactly. And, and I think that's what I like about this, pro this, this whole process and program is that you can make it reflect your personality. And so one of the things that we're talking about today, um, we, and we started yesterday, is getting through the gatekeeper I think we need to change that as getting to the gatekeeper, making sure that we understand that this is a strong relationship. It's not just a diversionary tack that we have to take. And we started off with a quote, before you see the king or queen, you have to get across the moat. I love this quote. And I took it directly from the cause selling um, uh, text. It's, it's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. So super fun. And I'm going to ask you again, what does the role of the gatekeeper entail and, and how has that been changing, I guess? Yeah, it's, it's a really great question, especially how it's been changing. But a gatekeeper essentially is anyone that you need to connect with to be able to connect with a prospective donor that you are trying to cultivate. So that can be an executive assistant, a professional advisor, that can be their friends, family, perhaps a spouse. But whoever it is who is protective of their time um, and it, in a way is, is filtering and screening you before you can actually have access. This can also be 
for example, professional advisors, maybe you don't have a specific prospect in mind, but there are many prospects that they could open doors. So really someone who can open doors to either a specific donor or a pipeline of donors that you need to connect with and really sell your cause to so that they're doing the work for you. So good. Well, today we are moving on to four more uh, strategy techniques. And I just want to recap yesterday what they were. So number one is to, you know, building rapport, adjust your attitude um, and go back and watch yesterday's show. So you can know exactly what we're talking about here. Number two is honesty, always the best policy policy, pardon me. And number three was to get some personal information. So Pearl, yesterday you shared those three uh, strategy techniques with us. And today you have four more. So take us away. Um, Number four that you're covering today is really about selling the cause. Now, what does that mean? So you want to sell your cause to your prospective donor. And what that means is not in what might come to your head as selling, it's it's cause selling. It's bringing them into your mission, aligning with them, making them feel motivated to partner with you um, by giving a gift. So with the gatekeeper, the way that I interpret this is you don't want to see them as a pass-through. They're not just a pass-through to get to the donor to then start the cause selling cycle. You're doing that with the gatekeeper. You want to bring them into your mission, sell the cause to them so they can sell it to your prospective donor. I love this. And you know what? This is not what I would have immediately thought of. I, I When we started talking about this two-day drill down, I was thinking, what are the strategies to get around or through? Mm-hmm. But I love this idea is get them with you, get them to join in on the concept. It's going to be better for everyone. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's such a fundamental uh, concept, but we don't think this way. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've seen this from a foundation standpoint, and I just wanted to add that in. And so it's really, we're advocating along the way. So if we can get that, that person that's maybe filtering those letters of intent or filtering those phone calls on board to really have that buy-in for the cause, be an advocate for us as it pushes forward to the lenses and the table of those that, that make a decision. And I see this happen quite a bit from that foundation standpoint, uh, Pearl. So I just, I wanted to add that nugget of information as well. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe this prospective donor is who you're trying to, to really cultivate, but think about this path, this gatekeeper, you never know they could also become a donor or a champion for your cause, not just with your prospective donor, but in the community, they could become a board member, a volunteer. It's just, it's important to remember more long-term your strategy and never miss an opportunity to engage someone with your cause. I have to, um, one of the things that I forget who shared this with us, probably one of your instructors had mentioned, you know, when you invite someone for a tour or to see your, you know, your theatrical performance also invite the, as, as we're using the term, the gatekeeper, but invite that administrative assistant, invite that person, you know, who's really in filtering those calls, invite them to come with the person you're inviting. And what a great way to really, you know, elevate that advocacy. Absolutely. Yeah. I I, I think it's really important because you're right, Jared, we we think of, you know, the end of the road, one person, and that's just, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, as my mother would say, stinking thinking, you know, (laughs) it's not, it's not a good idea, yeah. right? I mean, just bottom line, it's not a good idea. I mean, we're trying to cultivate interest in our nonprofits. It doesn't mean that we're just directing towards one person. It should yeah. be any and all people that we connect with. You know, the next one, number five, and this is like a really open-ended one, but it's be <laughs> thoughtful. Yeah. Okay, what does that mean? Because there are a lot of ways that that, that could go. There are a lot of ways. And I think that's really important because (laughs) being thoughtful is not a one size fits all with each person. It means to to really get to know that person, understand how to connect with them. So for example, uh, some people thank them, but be genuine. Don't go overboard. Some people get uncomfortable with that type of dynamic, right? So you always want to be aware of who you're talking to and be thoughtful of how to best use their time in a way that makes them feel seen, heard, and respected. Mm -hmm. Um, Like any other human, they cherish their time. So just be thoughtful about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think it almost dovetails to what you just said about 
if you look at the bigger picture in the longer run, um, it's not just get me through this person to the next. It's yes. yeah. It, it, and I would think it would make it less frustrating too, on your part. Mm -hmm. If you, if you don't get through, um, in the manner with which you're, you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of an interesting way to, to kind of, um, look at this, Jarrett, when you are out and about in the community, what's the reality of you seeing the, 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 um, engagement of gatekeepers? Has it increased? Is it falling? I mean, what, what's your sense of this? structure if you yeah, will. I think now that many of us are coming back to the ballrooms we're getting back to those lunch meetings right those gatekeepers as we're referring to them here decision makers uh whatnot they are part of the audience so they're either speaking part of the panelists you know group or they're simply there as an attendee but I have to say I always choose this opportunity and hopefully I'm thoughtful in this pearl just to go up them go up to them say hello acknowledge that they're there thank them for all their support in the community the other thing I like to do is to thank them for their support in another recent organization right so it's not all about yourself but you see them in the news, you see that there was just this press release that they supported another organization and you're thoughtful enough to say hey, I see you, I thank you, and I appreciate the work that you're doing to strengthen our collective community. Because that is not with your end goal in mind, right? That's really being thoughtful for the entire community. Absolutely. So. And that speak, that goes back to yesterday when we talked about doing research on the gatekeepers. Yes. So if you're doing that research, you can have that real honest conversation. Like you said, it's about the greater community and it's about them. So what a beautiful way to connect with someone that doesn't feel opportunistic or right. like they're just trying to just waiting until they can get to yeah. the real, real deal. So I think that's wonderful. And it's, just, <laughs> it's a great, genuine, organic opportunity um, to go up to them because yes, I am seeing more and more of these people, you know, out and about and, yeah. and meandering the ballrooms. So yeah. it's just nice to say, Hey, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, before we move on, you know, people change jobs. Mm -hmm. you know, they move and and we are seeing that now like never before mm -hmm. so it's really important not to burn bridges and to be authentic um in your way of dealing with people um because ultimately that person could lead you to something else and so absolutely uh, i think that's like really important okay and number six is really an interesting thing and boy some days we need this more than <laughs> others Keeping a sense of humor. Yes. I, that's not, I, I, that's not, I wouldn't <laughs> expected that from you. Okay. Tell us, Pearl. No, I love this one just because uh, those who work with me, you know, I, I love to have a sense of humor. I think that's a great way to connect with people. I would encourage anyone who's developing a connection with someone new to just be mindful of their sense of humor and how it relates how maybe the person's sense of humor to uh, try to the the most important part of this is you want to connect you want to connect to another human you want to show who you are your personality and be memorable mm -hmm. just be professional that's the one thing be sure you know who you're talking to so that when you when they do remember you it's for a good reason maybe not about that. <laughs> that's right. I love that. And just as you talk about a sense of humor, Pearl, like I hear your laughter coming through and yeah. makes me laugh. I think it just makes everything so much more joyful and positive yeah. in a conversation. I think we can all connect through humor, you know, mm -hmm. and through comedy. So what a great opportunity. It's a little less mainstream, and which is why I think Julia, you're like, I did not yeah. expect, you know, humor to show up here. Are we doing, you know, a comedy show? But I just love that. I, I it's very different. It's unique and it's human. It is. It's human. human. It is. Well, and you know, we're dealing with a lot of really tough things. Yeah. By the topics that we are dealing with um, are full of duress and mm -hmm. sometimes, oftentimes sadness. Yeah. And sometimes it seems like we're pushing a boulder up the hill. And so I like this. I think mm -hmm. it's very humanistic. And I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's really interesting. And again, Jared, you said it perfectly. I did not expect this. This is not the <laughs> one thing that I was like, yeah, that should be on the top seven. Um, but I'm glad it is because I think it's really good. Now, coming around to number seven, I think this is really interesting and I wanted to spend a little bit more time on this. And that is be patient. 
what are you what are you kind of trying to teach us on that piece of it pearl this is not an overnight thing getting through the door will not happen overnight um, I mean, anyone in fundraising, you know, it takes time to build relationships. It takes time to work up to the ask. And it's the same with gatekeepers. You need to be patient. Remember that they have a full time, whatever it is they're doing, they, they have their own thing. So you want to build trust that takes time building a relationship. Don't miss key steps in building that relationship, uh, plant seeds and know that if you're doing all of that, the seeds, right? That there will be that growth. It just takes time. And you can't, if you, if some, if you expect it to happen overnight, you're going to reverse your progress. So it's just, sometimes we have, I know, you know, you have your goal, your boss is there asking how it's going. Any way that you can continue to use data to manage up and really set those expectations, this will take time, but hopefully it will result in something wonderful for your organization. Well, I think the other thing we have to keep in mind is we're not the only organization they're talking to, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have yeah. literally, you know, we're in their queue. Hopefully we're, we're also top of mind for them, but we have to be mindful that, you know, there are other very worthy causes in our community around our globe. In fact, that these funders are likely also considering so I think we just need to keep that in mind and, and not see it as competition, mm -hmm. but to, to have that patience and grace, I'm going to throw that out, Julia, you know, uh, that it's, it will take time and it's not, as you said, overnight. Yeah. Yeah. We Very know true. from AFP that the average uh, tenure is running about 16 to 18 months for a development mm -hmm. team, which is just horrific. And every time I say that, I can't even believe I'm saying it. But think about the, the duration of these relationships. There are going to be a lot of folks that are coming around through when the original mm -hmm. person they spoke with is long gone. Yeah. And so how do, you, how do you suggest we mitigate that or manage it so that we're not losing those opportunities? So many different things. One, remembering that while you are developing that relationship, you're representing your organization. Mm -hmm. So you are cultivating a relationship between that person and your organization and you're the vehicle through which that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say you, you do leave. Any way that you can facilitate a transition that you, basically someone else can pick up on that relationship, take notes, use your CRM, make sure that whoever is coming in knows everything they need to know. And as you're building trust, again, ensure that you're building trust between them and your organization, that you are making your organization stand out, setting it up for success so that when you do leave, that relationship's there. It's not just cut off because you're leaving. Um, there's so many different, <laughs> that could be 10 episodes alone, but sometimes yeah. it's easy to get caught up in, this is my relationship with my donor. And, I, and I've been there. I know that feeling you, when you develop relationships, those, you don't just cut those off emotionally. Um, but any way that you can always remember that you are representing the organization that you are really trying to bring funds in for so that you can fulfill that cause, just mm -hmm. don't forget that. I'm so glad you mentioned that Pearl. Um, and especially, you know, as Julia shared, you know, really the national standard tenure, not really standard, but the tenure of, um, of a, you know, development person staying, that is frightening. That is a so sobering statistic because you think, you know, just at the time that they're getting up to speed with the organization, they might be leaving. And, yeah. and what do we do with all of that time and the energy and efforts that that's been poured into these partnerships? Um, and I do hope that we can create a 10 part series, <laughs> Pearl, of, of what that looks like, because there's so many, you know, techniques and strategies that I know we could share, but it is so very important to come from that lens, as you said, for the organization and not the person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And frankly, I think we need a 10 part series on how to <laughs> change that data, that data point, because yeah. it is, it is very concerning. Um, it's terrible. And you know, yeah. it, it's not changing. I would say it's holding strong. I mean, this was a data point that's been measured and reported on well before the pandemic. So this is not a pandemic issue. I mean, Jared, you and I have talked offline about how hard it is to work, you know, and, and, and build relationships 
and then leave or have a contract be up and then those deals come through and you don't get any credit you don't get any you know connectivity to it it's tough but hopefully it is tough. Still get to celebrate <laughs> what was that I said, hopefully you still get to celebrate when you open, you know, the Chronicle of Philanthropy or, you know, something and you're like, wow, $5 million went to this organization. And knowing as a professional, you had a part in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been there. And I remember former colleagues calling up and saying, guess what? This gift came through. You should feel proud. And I do think at the end of the day, if you really truly care about your cause, this is very easy to say, I recognize, but if you care about your cause, it, it is a good feeling to know I, I was part of that, but it would be much nicer to be, to have, you know, to be able to be there still and to be able to celebrate. So yeah. any way we can turn that number around. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You know, I always talk about that big foam check and I also reference Ed McMahon when it comes to the sweepstakes, right? It's like, I feel like everyone thinks, everyone, board members, executive staff, oh, we've hired a director of development. We've hired a chief development officer. Tomorrow, we're going to get a million dollars. And this be patient as the, the seventh of the strategy, I'm going to go out on the limb and say it might be the most important. I agree. I completely agree. I just, again, like you said, leadership needs to buy into that too, because it can't just be on the fundraiser um, if they don't have anyone advocating for them at the organization. Right. Because you can be patient, but if your leadership isn't patient, that that doesn't work. Right. Yeah. You know, it's almost seems to me um, like a really good idea to reinforce these seven steps with your board or with your executive leadership team so that they can understand what's going on. You know, when you look across the board table, chances are most of the people at that table, they have gatekeepers. And so I think it'd be really great for them to understand what these what these processes can be and what they mean. Because Jared, you're right, that sense of, oh, we hired somebody, tomorrow the money starts rolling. Um, it sets everyone up for abysmal failure, you know? And I think personally, that's why we blow through so many of our of our talents, that it's just too hard to stay and have that pressure. Um, well, and- one thing I wanna call out, I was, I was with um, at a lunch with a board member several years ago, and he literally said to me, Pearl, and you're probably gonna, you know, choke right now. Well, let me get you back to work. I know you got to start, get back to, you know, dialing for dollars. And I was like, oh my God, he doesn't get it. Like that's the impatience that, you know, when, when you have that mentality that as professional fundraisers, we pick up the phone and we, you know, we, we let our fingers do the walking in the yellow pages, which as we all know is obsolete. Like this whole dialing for dollars is not the long road. That is not the sustainable fundraising plan. And that's where we do to your point, Julia, teaching these seven key tips, um, techniques to the, you know, to the board, but also really to the exec, the entire team to understand we aren't dialing for dollars. We are making lifelong, hopefully transformational relationships. Yeah, absolutely. And just again, professionalizing the role of fundraising, that doesn't do that. That changes the power dynamic. And it is so hard to hear that. Also not surprising. And let's just talk about, hey, board member, instead of that, how about you do some dialing for me? Do you have a prospect pipeline you can help me build? How about some gatekeepers? You know, can you help me get in the door? It's, oh, or, <laughs> that's yeah. frustrating. I know. Yeah, it, it, it is. And I think that's why this conversation has been so great. Um, Pearl, we definitely needed the full two days because there's just so much. If you've missed our, for our beginning steps or you want to get your team on board for the, this two-day drill down, Part one uh, is just as valuable and it really helps kind of paint a picture and a roadmap of how this journey can work successfully, um, knowing that it's not a one-stop thing. And Pearl, you said something super magical to us yesterday. You said, when you think about this, this should be your structure for whomever you work with. This is how we build relationships. It's not, while we're talking about gatekeepers and it's, it's somewhat specific, this is an overall sensibility of how we should be, you know, shepherding our organizations. Absolutely. The human, the human connection. I mean, you never know what people can do to support your organization or how you can impact someone 
um, and inspire them. So why not be human and connect with people at a human level? I love it. I think it's been great. Well, make sure you check that out because uh, uh, building rapport with gatekeepers, the drill down part one and part two, um, really great ways to help you encourage you refocus maybe help you understand why things aren't working as well as they could be pearl hoagland director of fundraising academy at national university fundraising-academy.org is their website check it out they've got a lot of really cool things and before we let you go we really want you to share with us pearl about your new online learning portal because this is very revolutionary Yes, I love our portal and I'll just share it's, um, you can see at the bottom online.fundraising-academy.org. Please check it out. It is a resource for you that is at no cost to you. You create a free registration and you have access to our entire on-demand library. Whether you want to dive into an hour and a half webinar and gain CFRE education credits, or you just need, you're about to go into a meeting with a donor and you need some ideas on questions to ask. Maybe there's there's some informational gaps you need to fill. We have question templates, prospect qualification worksheets, anything you need, whether it's quick at your fingertips or more in-depth learning. Um, and it's all free basically to enhance your fundraising practice and help you feel more equipped and empowered to be successful. Pearl, you mentioned yesterday that you yourself go to this portal almost daily. Now I want to, <laughs> I want to ask who is this portal created for? Is it is it staff? Is it volunteers? Is it board? Like who's the audience for the portal? Yes, yes, and yes. This is for seasoned staff, seasoned fundraisers who have been in the practice for years and maybe you need a refresher. Maybe you want to pivot and try a different approach. We're here for you. If you're a newer fundraiser and you don't have a lot of access to professional development, at least that's affordable, we're here for you. Um, board members, we have so many board members come through our virtual and in-person doors for trainings, volunteers, anyone that is interested in helping raise money for an organization, we've got your back. I love it. And then beyond this, you have so many other services. You have the cohorts. I'm mm -hmm. sure those are starting up in 2023. Um, that's an amazing other offering that the Fundraising Academy provides. And we were talking too about the need for a board member cohort. So stay tuned mm -hmm. for that in 23. Yes, wow. definitely. Lots to come. It's really exciting. You know, uh, I think the thing that's been fun to see your work and your leadership um, how it's morphed and changed to all these changes that have kind of been pushed down on us via COVID and, and the various pandemics that we've really faced in the last three years. Um, and to me, that speaks volumes because it means that your your project is sound and your, uh, your approach is, pro the, the cost selling cycle is great, but you understand that we're doing things a little differently. And so it seems to me like, this isn't just, you know, read the textbook as I have all marked. <laughs> but I mean, it still works, right? Even yeah. though, you know, there's there's some nuances. And so yeah. um, Jarrett and I talk about this all the time. We would have raised a lot more money for our communities um, if we had started off with this training um, from the get-go because we figured out a lot of this on along the way. Don't you think, Jarrett? It's like, yeah. you know, a lot versus... of battle scars. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I mean, oh, we're like, I hear you. Yeah. Coming out of meetings and saying, what just happened? Yeah. Because you know? um, I didn't get it. But anyway, well, hey, I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom. I like to call her my nonprofit nerd, but she's also your nonprofit nerd. Um, and so thank you very much, Jarrett, to be on this amazing journey with us. Again, we want to thank all of our sponsors who allow us to be here day in and day out. We're moving towards our seven hundredth episode um our executive producer just told us or told me i think yesterday that we're going to be up to almost a million views alone this year um <laughs> look at know. pearl's mouth she's like that's amazing <laughs> yeah and i was like no wait what <laughs> and so i mean there are a lot of really cool things um that these sponsors have allowed us to to grow into Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Your Part-Time Controller, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, 
nonprofit thought leader, and the nonprofit nerd. Again, these are the folks that really have joined in with us day in and day out. Wow, okay, I have a lot of things to think about when I work with gatekeepers, and um, I really appreciate this two-day drill down, Pearl, amazing. Thanks for having me. I'll miss it's you tomorrow. <laughs> Well, and our Fridays are always dedicated uh, thanks to Fundraising Academy as the underwriter for each and every Friday, or as I like to refer to them, Fridays. So thank you for that. Thank it's you. an amazing thing. Hey, everybody, as we end every episode, we like to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.